Welcome to the Cube's coverage. Bye. Welcome Google back, everyone, to the Cube's live coverage in San Francisco, California. We're here at Google Next. I'm John Furrier, your co-host with Rob Strecce, Gustin Kirkland, Lisa Marvin, four hosts today getting all the action. They're out getting the stories. We've got a great segment here about how the ecosystem in Google Next is exploding. Obviously, we could have two sets. There's more people want to come on, and then we have seeds. We've got two great guests here. Blake Shiver, Vice President of Global Cloud, for partners at Red Hat and Clive DeSosa, head of partner engineering at Google Cloud. Uh, gentlemen, thanks for coming on. We were just ripping I'll about the AI greatness. Great to have you guys on. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having you. Us. Thank you so for having Red us. Hat, you guys always had great open source mojo and, the, and now open source is really a big part of the AI. We're going to get to that. Google, congratulations on, on a great first thank keynote. You. The demos are fantastic. It's just mind blowing to see how you can collect first party stuff and then have AI do something different that's actionable, that's it's just, it's, 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 a, it's a moment I think where it's like, it's crossing over and, and it's got a lot of legit, integrate, hard problem solving, so congratulations yeah. on that. Thank Any, you. Anyway, so uh, thanks for coming on. We'll get into some of that. The big thing that we've been talking about on our first segment was, on the keynote review was the ecosystem. You guys are um, getting another shot at the, at, the, at the apple here, so to speak, with the ecosystem, it's booming. Really interesting time, um, and Red Hat have been a great partner. You guys got some news to share here about Red Hat partnership and Google. Let's get right to the news. Yeah, yeah, so I don't know, should I, should I share the news or should you share the news? It's all you, I mean, <laughs> for it. We are so proud we won Partner of the Year for infrastructure from Google this year, and we've been working so hard just to bring this partnership to the next level for our customers. Yeah. And Clive and the, and the rest of the people at Google that we've been working with, it's just been uh, so validating to get that award this year, so thank you, thank you for that. It's, and it's more of the customers, to be honest. I mean, the way we yeah. look at it, and, and we always talk, if you look at Red Hat, it's not just the operating system. We look at Ansible, we look at OpenShift and all of that, and purely from a platform perspective, it's where the customers are, where we want to meet them yeah. on the journey as they come to the cloud. So for us, that's the validation, and uh, we're fortunate to have Red Hat as one of our partners. Yeah, thank you, I agree, yeah. And what's some of the main things that jumped out on the award? Was it the simplicity of the solutions? Because we're seeing a lot of solutions, Rob and I were referring that it's not so much about all the services that Google has, it's the solutions uh, that are out there. And you got the DevOps market going, DevSecOps now, I call it data ops or data engineering or you know, uh, data developer emerging, a new persona is coming. What, what's the reasons for the partnership award? What were some of the highlights? Well, I think, I think Clive said it best. We've really put the customer experience at the center of this, right? So if we have a really good customer experience when you're procuring whatever software you need to run your cloud vision and your cloud mission on, and then while you're building that and what you're delivering on that, if you're, we're creating value for our customers and for their customers, that's what's bringing us together on this. So honestly, I think it's just putting the customer in the center and focusing on how do we make that experience just as good as possible. That has brought Red Hat and Google and the, the two ecosystems that we both have yeah. together for that common cause. Yeah, and, and just to do a plus one on that, one of the things which we appreciate about how Red Hat is moving, when you look at how they're embracing generative AI, and if you look at Ansible and the adapters and plugins they're putting in, at the end of the day, what really matters to developers is develop productivity. Yeah. And the way you can integrate more and more of the technology and make the productivity better, that's what we're seeing a lot more in terms of adoption also. It's one of the personal victories of doing theCUBE, Bravo, over 13 yeah. years is you see everything. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll never forget my first Ansible Fest many, many years ago when Red Hat bought Ansible. Uh, it's like this corner, I mean, I've loved configuration, man. I, that, I'm kind of weird like that, but <laughs> I love DevOps. It's cool. But Ansible was a tell sign of what was coming with automation. Okay, and since then, that's a nice ground game into the, the, the goodness of what AI's delivering in terms of what's abstracting away with the data. So, you know, th this, is, this is the key story now is AI, but really it starts yeah. with automation, getting things platformed out properly um, and making, that's the DevOps journey. But now as we go to the next level, there's so much change happening. Yep. How do you guys look at that partnership? Because if I'm the customer, I got to be thinking to myself, do I choose this or that? Or if I, if I pick Langchain and if I go this way, it's like, there's a lot of greatness and, and goodness coming, but there's also a lot of choice and, yeah. and, and I won't say complexity, but like path decisions. Yeah. Will I be over my skis if I go down this road? So there's a lot of, ease of use is easy to say, but like cho ease of choice from a yeah. customer standpoint. I, I can take a yeah, stab at it. So when you look at Vertex AI and the Vertex AI extensions we announced today, it's not only what Google has brought to bear in the market, that's the first party. It includes open source and third party offerings. 
But when you look at a developer's experience today from an ID mm -hmm. and how they are deploying something in the environment, I think from a compliance perspective, from a security perspective, from a best practice perspective, if those are already vetted and they're continually tested on the Vertex AI extensions which are plumbed in, the developers never have to worry that, hey, am I deploying the right architecture, the right version of operating system, the right version of Ansible on my platform? And that comes in because you have that in real time being checked for you. So in many ways, those guardrails yeah. are fixed. To a certain extent, the choice also is very prescriptive, which matters in migrations where you need to have an opinionated view and you bring it to the market, right? And so in many ways, we are also handling that, making sure the data is secure, the environment is compliant, and you adhere to the governance and best practices. I mean, I would love to get your point of view on that. Yeah, I, so I think that if you think about Red Hat's portfolio working with Google here, where we've got Red Hat Enterprise Linux at the base, we've got OpenShift as this sort of industry-leading development platform and an app platform, and then Ansible to automate. Those are the three basic simple things. They're all, they're, they're yep. governed, they're built with open source, so they're tested by a community, and those are the three basic things that a customer actually needs so that they can go take something like advanced AI services that are coming out from Google and quickly bring those to market to create value for their business. So if, if they standardize on a real trusted open source platform like Red Hat, they can get the value out of these higher level AI type tools a lot quicker. Trust, yeah. the key word yeah. is trust. The key yeah. word is it trust. Is trust right? and, and, and making yeah. sure that as you build those new things, that you can get them out fast and that they're going to run and they're going to have good uptime and create a good experience for their customers. Yeah. And that's what we're majoring on together. Yeah, I mean yeah. they have a relationship with Red Hat. Your customers have a trust relationship with Red Hat and you are a proxy to the, all the underlying things you're doing for them. It's like a phone and a contract with the carrier. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of stuff going on under the covers, but you're the, you're the point of contact. Yeah, that's very true. And, you know, and something that, to me, is really interesting about the trust and the open source model, Red Hat is, is representing that trust layer, but what's holding us accountable is an entire multi-million contributor open source ecosystem that, it, that is a part of that. So it's not just one company that's given a guarantee to Google and all of Google's clients that we're going to that we're going to be trustworthy. We, we have to be trustworthy to the entire community. We have to be trustworthy to all of open source. And that is what I think really gives that sort of extra depth and yeah. the stamp of trust that Red Hat brings to that. And when you build that from the developer mindset or the IP is a really big hot topic, right? Uh, bleeding over of any GPL V3 core into BSC and what have you. There are now mechanisms built in with Vertex, with, with, with uh, Duet AI into the ID where you can check for if IP is bleeding over and you can do digital fingerprinting to ensure that, hey, is this code coming from open source? Is it coming from my repo? And you have that level of provenance now built into your system. So in many, many ways, the trust value chain is even strengthened, right? So as long as we have that governance laid down. Yeah, I, I think that's the interesting, I mean, you're, you are the two OGs of <laughs> open source for Kubernetes. And, yeah. and, I mean, to, to put it mildly, I mean, you go to KubeCon <laughs> and we were both there yeah. talking about the data engineering and data, you know, looking at platform engineering in general. I think that you know, your, your Dora report is out and being filled out now and it will be probably published pretty soon and that's like the OG report on key metrics for yeah. developers. I read it every year, uh, I've, I've, I've done different broadcasts on it. I think what's interesting, and I, I definitely your perspective, because you're both OGs in AI as well, now that you know, Red Hat is part of you know, the whole Watson X uh, portfolio with the open, OpenShift data science platforms, it would seem that it gives a lot of choice to your co joint customers about how they bring things to a multi-cloud environment. Is that where you're seeing a lot of this coming from? Is that, hey, we, we're trying to help people get to that multi-cloud environment? I mean, you guys are on other clouds as well, but I mean, again, winning partner of the year, it's got to be growing pretty nicely here as yeah. well. I, I could take the first crack at Go that if you, if you yeah. want. Um, I think that, um, there, Clive said it earlier, Moving something to the cloud, all the stuff that you're talking about, taking advantage of AI, it sounds great, and we see a demo on stage and it blows our mind. It's hard to do, it's extremely hard to do. So the more friction that we can remove from that, the more decisions that we can just make at the infrastructure layer that are, again, trusted decisions, you know, based on open source principles that ultimately help that customer take their energy and their very valuable talent resources and apply them to the top of the stack with that AI vision, how do I bring that to life? 
that's going to go quicker for them. And so that's what we're trying to do at the end of the day. We want to remove that friction. Uh, we want to be that, that standard trusted platform and say let's, let's bring out those sparks of innovation at higher levels in your business. There is a multi-cloud you know, component to it. There's an on-premise component in a cloud yeah. and a hybrid component as well right. too. A lot of this stuff starts on-premise and then moves into the cloud. Making that easier than you could ever possibly imagine, that's what we ultimately envision and want to do. And that multi-cloud or super cloud as we call it is the apps are going to run across those environments. I mean, it's distributed computing, basically. So, yep. okay, we get that. As the apps come out, that's going to be the interesting piece. I'd love to get your thoughts on how you guys see your joint customers' needs. So I, I buy the trust, it's a great way to start with, with Red Hat and Google Cloud, I see that. But then what happens next? It's going to be like, okay, I got to solve problems. And that, that yeah. duet demo on stage where you know, all those alerts come in and then AI just solves it, duet button. I mean, that's pretty, I mean, that's, that's, that's scaling automation to a level that's unprecedented. So yeah. that's, we see that. It's mind blowing. Client's going to want that immediately. What do you guys see as the joint needs now and how does that translate going forward? Because I'm sure there's going to be some platform engineering that's going to get done, apps, shift left for security, but also at, where do you shift for the data? Where do you shift for AI? How does that get built into the, to the data developer? So, a couple of things, right? In the, in the grand scheme of things, as it migrates from on-prem to hybrid to the cloud, we always say the same thing. Customers do not migrate infrastructure, they migrate applications, right? And that draws a whole bunch of the entire portfolio with that. Now, as it relates to AI, AI is going to be ubiquitous. That is just the nature of the beast. Be it be in DevSecOps, be it be in operations, be it be in product management, be it be even SRE. That's yeah. where you mentioned the alerts come in. Where we are seeing is that from a pure productivity perspective, from an operational burden perspective, all of that is shifting up. It, it is going to become a core ingredient API level integration, not just at which is the best operating system for me, but which is the best compute chip for me? How am I deploying it? Where is my region which is you know, spiking up, not where do I do a burst to the cloud? This is where we see the industry moving. I, as it relates to, I, 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 we always repeat this, when you're moving to the cloud, you don't want to tear out what you have on-prem. You got to do it in a very methodical manner, you got to do it in a structured manner, and the AI gives you those guardrails, right? If you look at Google's history and how we are rolling out our APIs, how we are rolling out all our services, they're very deliberate. We, we are not in favor of speed. We don't right. want to go and hit the wall really hard and then pay the consequences for that. It is very thoughtful, it's very deliberate, and just launched 38 new languages. Now we have over 100 languages support on Vertex AI. Yeah. And that's all part of, you know, you want the developers to be able to have that knack, the language conversation with the ID into it. That's where it's going. The developer is going to start interacting with yeah. the entire ID almost like a paired programming model. And that integrates everything you yeah. need as, as a default on the box, so. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I, I couldn't say it. It's I couldn't say it better. <laughs> it's going to certainly accelerate and change open source as we know yeah. it. It's going to radically increase more code, more, probably more efficiency actually, you think about some of the code efficiency. So For sure. It's gonna, I mean, all the action in AI right now is, in, from a developer's perspective, is open source. Um, it's not getting enough press, but it's booming. Open source, I mean, there's a lot of things happening in the open yeah, right sure. now, in, sure. the, in the long tail of these models, certainly the AI side we're seeing it. Uh, should be a game changer. Yeah, I oh, think it so. Is, I it, is, it, 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 it is already changing the game. It's already changing the game. And I think giving those, those customers choice is really important. And, you know, the, to your point, open source is such an interesting model based on curiosity and solving problems. Isn't that what it's all about at the end of the day, right? We want to be able to unleash that. Yeah. Um, so, anyway. Yeah, and it seems like there's a lot of innovation going on in both platforms that can you know, be paired together. And I, I, that has to be kind of one of the themes for the joint customers is, hey, bring it here this way and we can help accelerate that for you. Well, it's bring it here However you need to, we're going to accelerate it yeah. for you, yeah. right? I mean, we want to meet, we want to be very adaptable to what that client, you know, what that client needs. And we really, we didn't talk about marketplace at all, but it's, it also comes down to like, how do you buy the software? Yeah. How do you actually yeah. procure and get the software? How do we make that just really easy? You know, remove time from these cycles that's, that are just energy vampires in terms of helping to get to whatever your, your business mission and, and objectives are. Take that off the equation, you know, Ansible, uh, Linux, OpenShift, they're all available in the Google Marketplace. Yeah. Uh, boom, Let, let's create a standard platform, quickly migrate those workloads and allow you to start 
getting the full value out of AI uh, in, in ways, again, that you, can't, you couldn't have ever previously imagined. I was going to get to that question around how customers can take that journey with you guys together, uh, Red Hat and Google, because what you're getting at is, okay, I'm the customer, okay, you check the boxes, AI on the, on the, on the problems you guys saw, okay, compliance. By the way, compliance has always been an, 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 a dragging anchor to innovation and data. Got to have it siloed, now with embeddings and extensions, yep. Very interesting things you can do with data. So okay, now data is horizontally scalable. Thank you very much, cloud. Now I got to get apps out there so I can check, check, check. Okay, I'm a customer. How do I get started? I, need, I like the trust, sold me on that. How do I span my journey with you guys? What's the solution when, when look you, like? When you look at the cloud in general, I always tell people, you know, your data center can be managed by the 20-inch monitor in front of you. From a compliance and procurement perspective, to have well-vetted ISVs, you have well-defined blueprints which come from either the Google Cloud Marketplace or internal marketplace which can plumb into the Google Cloud Marketplace. And you can deploy it in your environment without having the hassle of going to the procurement group, getting a cost charge back center set up, getting a project set up, waiting on weeks, sometimes months. But all of this literally is click, deploy, and you're in your environment. And you know for a fact that whatever is getting deployed is compliant, has all the policies, be it be GDPR, be it be CCPA, be it be ITAR, is compliant and these are the security best practice for your organization, right? So that, all that thinking, which I call it as developer overhead, is removed. You go to productivity right away. You know, a developer should not have to worry about, is this the right version, or am I going to get into trouble for that? It should be, I want to deploy well with Ansible, yeah. I want to have a back end of Alloy DB, and I, I want to have it on-prem as well as the cloud, Alloy DB Omni, and here yeah. is how I'm going to do it. And by the way, I want a whole bunch of Gen.I embeddings in it, what is the right environment for me. The entire portfolio can now be deployed, yeah. and it just click and deploy in the environment. That is where the industry is heading. Yeah, and, I totally and you agree. can burn down the credits without having to worry about anything in the back end. It's all tied in. You know? and, and you guys do a great job there. One of the things that Red Hat's done really well over the past decade is, you know, the OpenShift was kind of a great stroke of genius, how you guys rode that wave, beautiful. I love the answer, as you know, earlier I mentioned that. Um, I was a fan of Red Hat is that you guys nailed the open source and scale that up. Now it's run, run, run fast uh, and scale up. Because AI is going to allow for accelerated product market fit. So I'm expecting developers to start, and yep. enterprise start hitting some new products, new apps are going to hit the scene. So with Red Hat, how do I get on board? What do you guys, what solution are you recommending? How does the customer get engaged with you guys? I said marketplace, what, take us through the, the playbook. I'm a customer, how do I onboard with uh, Red Hat and Google Cloud? Yeah, so the, here's the thing about marketplace. It doesn't require a lot of explanation. Mm -hmm. It's like the first time that you went online shopping, you just bought the thing and it showed up at your door, right? It's about that simple. What's unique about Red Hat in this equation is, if you've got Red Hat on premise or you're already doing some business with Red Hat and you have a lot of workloads running, and you want to do some stuff in marketplace and you want to enter into the cloud world, you make, that, you make the purchase in both places, all the software works together. It doesn't matter where it's running. It doesn't matter if it's on premise, if it's in, in, in a cloud, or if it's even on an edge. Everything's going to look like one control plane to you as a customer, but that stuff that, you're into, that you buy in the marketplace is going to be much easier to procure and to buy and, and to go from time to value from when I buy it to when I can actually turn it on and start running an app on it. Like it's, it's, it's almost instantaneous. Um, which is unheard of. I mean, in enterprise software, I remember <laughs> you buy the app, you get the CD, <laughs> Uh, a person comes Shrink and wrapped. installs the seat, installs the CD <laughs> and, uh, into the, the thing. Server. There's some debugging, and like two <laughs> weeks later, you got something. It's like it's literally buy, click, you know, and, and go. Um, now we do we do private offers. So if you already have an existing relationship with Red Hat, or you want to commit to something and get you know get a discount, we have the ability to do private offers to to, to accommodate that for customers. Um, and, and like Clive said. If you've already got a spin commitment with Google and you purchase this way, it's also going to count against your spin commitment to Google. So yeah. for any CFO that you know accidentally dialed in and is listening to this right now, that's a huge value proposition yeah. for you, along with the risk uh, mitigation and compliance things that we've talked about. And so most of your customers deploying Ansible, OpenShift, and obviously RHEL, right? And, and, and the one yes, thing, exactly. All of that is available directly on Google Marketplace. And the one thing which Blake uh, we talked about this briefly is the enterprise support. Because if you have support, and by the way, it's a really big deal for large infrastructure deployments and migrations. If you have the support with Red Hat on-prem, and you move to the cloud, it's a warm handoff between Google and Red Hat. It's not, this is your problem Red Hat versus this is your problem Google. We actually have a very tight integration at the ticketing level, yep. right? And that's how the tickets are handled too. 
Awesome. Blake, Clive, Absolutely. great to have you on. Congratulations on Partner of the Year, Red Hat. Um, well deserved. Thank uh, you. Congratulations on all your continued success. Yeah, and thank thanks you. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thank, thank you for having us, it's been awesome. And thank you, Clive, for being oh, such an you, awesome partner. Thank you, my pleasure. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Final question, what do you guys do next? How do you top Partner of the Year? Get it again, repeat, repeat. What's next in the partnership? What are you guys going to work on? Well, Take us through the roadmap. I love how Clive framed this earlier. Partner of the Year is just an outcome, right? We're focused on the customer, we're focused on delivering the customer value. I really want to see what innovations come out of, when, when we truly enable that, when we truly create that, what are the amazing innovations that come out of this? How do we take these basic tools that we've put together and construct them into things that are just going to change our lives in ways that we don't even know yet? Um, that, to me, is the next step, and that's what I'm really focused on. Clive? I mean, when, when we look at, <clears throat> excuse me, when you look at Red Hat and where they are today, for that matter, any ISV, look, generative AI in and of itself is literally in its infancy. We're just taking off. Where we are going to see the most innovation, the delamination happening between the market leaders and the innovators is how quickly they adapt to it. When you have that very prescriptive, very well thought out, what's your AI strategy, how I'm going to get it into my stack, that's where we'll start seeing the market leaders form. I think next year, by this time, I expect to see vendors like Red Hat, if, if, if I may say, having much more rich yeah. integration and actually having and leading the actual, the, the human interaction, the engagement model completely different. In, 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 in an area, in a ballpark, in a, in, in a plane, maybe you've not even seen, yeah. right? And that's what you expect to see. It's not just making a better mousetrap, yeah. to be honest. It's going to be the next level, yeah. technology It's coming. about the roadmap. You guys are doing a great job on that. Yeah. I think all this points to that you got startups and enterprises, both of you guys doing a great job. You know, uh, get, the, get the developers code in the apps, get the infrastructure to support it, get the solutions, and the ecosystem, the trifecta. That's Congratulations. right. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thanks thank for you. coming on, guys. Appreciate it. Okay, we'll keep coverage. Thank you very much. We have more coverage here, day one, two and a half days of live. I'm John Furrier with Rob Stretchy. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>